When you take a picture with a camera, the light entering the lens is filtered into three primary colors, red, green, and blue, each at a specific wavelength. Different combinations of these three wavelengths produce the range of colors you see on a digital image. Cameras mimic the way a human eye works. The approximately 10 million colors that I can distinguish are the result of just three types of cone cells, found on the light-sensing retina at the back of the eye. Each type of cone cell contains a variant of the photoreceptor protein called photopsin, responding to different wavelengths of light. But what if you could detect more than just three wavelengths and instead create an image using an entire spectrum? This is the basis behind hyperspectral imaging, HSI. Taking a hyperspectral image of a scene creates what's known as a data cube, where the x and y axes correspond to the spatial dimensions and the z axis corresponds to the wavelength of light reflected from the object. For each pixel, we can create a graph of wavelength versus reflectance. The data cube can convey precise information about the properties of an object and map them to their position. These data cubes are created using a hyperspectral camera. There are many types of hyperspectral camera, one of which uses the point scan method. Light reflected from the object enters the lens and is dispersed into its component wavelengths onto an array of detectors. By scanning across the entire object, the camera gathers spectral information for each point and can assemble the data cube. This method is slow, yet it produces very high spectral resolution. A second type of hyperspectral camera contains multiple filters for specific wavelengths, scanning the entire field of view at once and assembling the data cube wavelength by wavelength. Wavelength scanning is limited by the range of filters the camera contains, but it's advantageous when surveying large areas at once. Hyperspectral imaging has an extreme range of applications. For example, farmers can use HSI to monitor the health of their crops. Plants that are healthy, nutrient deficient, or dead will produce different reflectance spectra. Therefore, by using a plane or drone to collect images of a field, farmers can pinpoint exactly where they need to alter water or fertilizer distribution, increasing yield and conserving resources. Produce can also be imaged to detect rot, disease, or bruising as a method of non-invasive quality control. HSI is also used in art conservation and analysis. Knowing the precise pigments used in a painting can reveal clues about its location, age, and artist, and it can inform conservators about how to approach any necessary restoration. Instead of taking physical samples of the paint, which would be destructive to the work, conservators can image a painting and compare the spectra to reference spectra of known pigments. They will then know what exact pigments were used and where. Imaging can also reveal hidden underdrawings beneath the painting. For example, this is Pablo Picasso's The Tragedy. Researchers imaged the painting using shortwave infrared spectroscopy, a subset of HSI in the shortwave infrared range of wavelengths. Different wavelengths can penetrate the painting at different depths, and by looking within narrow regions of the data cube and layering different spectral band images on top of each other, the data revealed Picasso's three underdrawings. The third application of HSI is in medicine. Biochemical and morphological abnormalities in diseased tissues will result in reflection spectra distinct from healthy tissue. Cancers are known to alter local blood circulation and oxygenation, and can be spotted within healthy tissue in vivo with HSI. Different types of cancers can also be distinguished from each other. For example, researchers in 2018 were able to map the different spectra of five types of brain cancer, including primary tumors and secondary metastatic variants that originated elsewhere in the body before migrating to the brain. HSI can also be used as a surgical guide to maximize tumor resection. Cancerous tissue is often difficult to distinguish from healthy tissue to the human eye. Analyzing spectral differences allows surgeons to delineate between the tissue types to remove any residual tumor and reduce damage to adjacent tissue. Real-time imaging can also help surgeons visualize tissues obscured by blood and monitor tissue oxygenation saturation during surgery. Agriculture, art, and medicine are only a few areas where hyperspectral imaging is used. This amazing imaging technique also has applications in geological mapping, pollution monitoring, surveillance, and astronomy. And as HSI progresses in efficiency, affordability, and precision, it will likely be used in a host of other fields in the future.